I don't want to sound like um, Grandpa Folk Rock, but <laughs> is our albums still a thing? Is that what you're working towards? I know you've had a couple singles yeah. out. Yeah, no albums. I guess so. They're just electronically now. But yeah, definitely, I'm going to be releasing an album pretty soon. And how have you been working on that? Is it single by single? Or are you working from a bigger palette and these singles are just pieces of that? Um, I guess I've just kind of been writing a bunch of sing um, singles here and there. And then um, I just want to put them all together into an album pretty soon. Mm -hmm. But they come, they're like mainly throughout the last year because I've had so much time at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I know you, did you start on Broadway? How would you kind of order your, the sequence of events in your life? Because Yeah, you I, I started on Broadway. I started acting um, professionally when I was uh, six and my first show was Les Mis. And then I went on to, that was a national, a, a national Broadway tour. And then I went on to White Christmas and then I went on to School of Rock on Broadway when I was 10. And then I um, transitioned into a singer-songwriter kind of path. Uh, so that's it. You've just done, was it four or five Broadway shows at this point? Uh, I've done one Broadway show and then okay. I guess I did two national tours. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're splitting hairs. Um, <laughs> were you always writing stuff? Did you always have music going through your head? Yeah. I mean, I've been writing songs even if like when I was really little, I used to write songs by like silly things throughout the day. Like my mom has a video of me singing a song about ice cream, like how much I wanted to eat ice cream at that moment. <laughs> so like I, I wrote songs like that, but I guess I started to take it more seriously when I was in School of Rock and I had like access to all these um, recording studios in New York City. And so how did that develop with access to these studios and, and all of that? Um, I mean, I was, we lived in the city for about two years. So during that time, I think the first studio I went to there was Avatar, which I thought was cool because it was like my name at the beginning. Right. Um, yeah, so I started with that. And then once I got out of School of Rock, I decided to um, reach out to some producers and possibly record my own music. And um, that's kind of where it all stemmed from. And you've been working with some pretty heavy hitters, producing wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've worked with a lot of amazing producers, like um, Ed Sheeran's producer, um, Will Hicks. We so what I did at the beginning was, I guess, I kind of just reached out to producers of songs that I really liked. That's what I did. I I gave um, I gave my mom songs that I liked. And then um, my mom and like my team reached out to those producers and um, a lot, we, we got a lot of positive responses for my music and a lot of the time they wanted to work with me. So that was really, um, I felt very blessed. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a pretty nice, nice way to go about it. Yeah. I know your first single was, was it The Christmas Tonight? Yeah, that Before. was, that was my first sing um, single, yeah. Now, one of the things I, I love about your bio on your website um, <laughs> it says you play piano, bass, guitar, violin, and ukulele. Yeah. It says you began performing at age four and writing songs at age five, which I'm assuming is where the ice cream song comes in. <laughs> right. Which instrument did you start out on? I started, my first instrument was violin and piano, kind of like at the same time, I feel like. And that was when I was maybe four. So that was really early on because some people in my family played those instruments. Um, but then from there, once I was in School of Rock, I had to learn the bass a few days before my audition for School of Rock. And um, then I, I guess I picked up guitar and ukulele while I was in School of Rock because everybody kind of played those instruments. <laughs> and so do you still play all of those things or do you have kind of a main one that you stick to now? Um, I do still play all of them, but right now my favorite is probably the piano because it's very easy to see all the keys and um, it's easy to write songs too, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so 
as far as the recording goes, are you writing these songs and then going into the studio recording them? Or are you booking time in a studio and going, oh, God, I got to have something to record. Let's write this. Or going through a notebook and being like, oh, I, I wrote down this thing about ice cream. Let's let's focus on that now. <laughs> Not to right. keep going back to ice cream. but <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that's right. Um, I guess I it really depends. Like I haven't done as many sessions where I just go in um, and write a song in the recording studio. I really want to do that this year, um, but because of COVID, obviously that got delayed. But hopefully um, pretty soon I'll be able to just go into a recording studio and come up with a bunch of songs and record them right there and then. But so far it's mainly been um, me writing songs beforehand, um, just uh, day to day, week to week or whatever. It really depends how prolific I am, <laughs> depending on how much free time I have. But yeah, a lot of the time now I just kind of write the songs and I either record them at home or I do go to the producer's um, home and I record them there. So when you're writing, is that something you sort of have to force yourself to do and sit down and say, I'm going to work on this for 45 minutes? Or is this just stuff that's naturally just going through your head and you take the time to quickly you know, record it onto something or make a few notes on your phone? Yeah, no, the songs definitely just kind of come to me. Something that happens a lot is I'll just be thinking something, like some kind of phrase over and over again. And I, I like automatically or unconsciously just come up with a melody for it. And then I kind of bounce off of there. And then I'll sit down and be like, okay, this is what I want to write the song about. And let me build it off of this one line that I came up with while I was like walking around the house or something. Do you, it seems like that's not how everybody works. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, that's got to be, I don't say, oh, that's got to be nice, but that seems like a, <laughs> a pretty fortuitous way to, to be able to go about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, I mean, there are times, that being said, there are times where I write down and I just feel, uh, I'm sorry, I sit down and I just think, you know, I want to write a song right now. I'm like in the mood, I'm feeling creative. And there are times when I'll uh, really put my mind to it. But the majority of the time, they definitely do just kind of come to me as ideas. So interesting. And mm -hmm. that there's, have you, I mean, you've been writing for a while now, it seems. Um, have you seen your style grow and change? And who are you kind of looking to as saying, oh, if I could just emulate the career of that person? Yeah, definitely. Um, my style has definitely morphed into um, various styles over the years. Um, originally, I feel like I had a kind of Broadway style because that's mainly where I came from. I mean, mm -hmm. I grew up like, listening to Broadway and Disney music, and that's kind of where it started. But over the years, as I've listened to more artists, like um, Halsey is one of my favorites right now. I mm -hmm. like Camilla Cabello. Um, I like Conan Gray. I feel like those artists have um, really influenced my music and now it's more of a indie slash pop or country sound. <laughs> yeah. And how do you marry those two things? Because the the voice of a Broadway singer, somebody kind of professionally trained who, who performs, you know, in, in musicals and such is a very different voice than some of the folks you listed. How do you kind of right. reconcile those two things and make that come together in your own way. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed kind of transitioning like that because um, when I first started singing and writing pop music, the producers were always like, maybe like, don't belt that note because that sounds very Broadway, maybe try it in a more like breathy head voice. And at first it was really difficult because um, at that point, I'd been trained to really project and have a kind of um, more nasal sound, I guess, which is kind mm -hmm. of what it's always about. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the, my producers were like, oh yeah, let's try more in this pop style. And through imitating these different pop singers that I really liked and kind of combining them all together, I think I've created my own style, which is still um, growing and changing as I continue to sing. <laughs> so is it sort of unlearning what you learned or some other amalgamation of those things? Yeah, kind of unlearning what I learned and also combining because I I do still have um, 
for some of my songs when I write them, they just come out Broadway and like that's cool, <laughs> whatever. Um, but then I guess I just really like combining styles. Like some of my songs might have a bit of a Broadway tone, but that's okay. And all other um, other songs might have a very pop sound that sounds nothing like Broadway, and that's also cool. I, I just I I feel like my songs have a lot of variety to them, and mm -hmm. I really like that because, like I said before, when they come to me, I don't really know what to expect, and I I like that about my songs and my um, style. Well, even just looking at your Broadway resume, I mean, Les Mis and School of Rock are two very different shows. <laughs> so, sure. so even in that world, you're kind of coming at it from a bunch of different ways. And I'm assuming that's only got to help you as you go forward in writing stuff and just expand your palette and expand your voice on what you can kind of accomplish. Yeah, it was really funny going from Les Mis to School of Rock because Les Mis is obviously a I mean, it has amazing music, but it's a very depressing show and a depressing story. Um, and then to go to School of Rock, where it was so encouraging and about like child musicians, it was a really interesting transition. But both of them were great. How does that end your night? I mean, <laughs> how does that at, after the curtain goes down? Because you see some of these shows on Broadway, or at least I do. And if they end on a down note, I just imagined everyone backstage just being like, oh man, let's, <laughs> you want to go to the Olive Garden? Like, what do you, how do you take that and just let go of it and get ready for the next show and go home and watch TV and go to bed? Yeah, well, I have to be honest, at the point in my life where I was doing Les Mis, I was only seven, so I didn't completely know the whole storyline. <laughs> Fair, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really know what was happening. I just like went out there and I sang Castle on a Cloud. I knew basically what I was singing about, but um, I mean, I, it was it was just so much fun. I, at that point, I really, um, I didn't actually realize that it was a job. I thought that <laughs> these were just a bunch of talented volunteers or something uh, coming together and creating, doing something that everybody really loves. Um, but at that point, I didn't realize I was being paid or like anything like that. I just thought it was something fun to do when I was seven. So when did you figure out that it was a job? At eight or? <laughs> yeah, I guess my, my next show, <laughs> White Christmas, <laughs> when mm -hmm. I was nine, yeah. So just looking at your songs that you have on your website, they are all, just the titles of them even. You know, there's Optimist, there is uh, Home and Rising Star and Hear My Cry. They all seem very personal, but also there's a little, it seems like they're very, they're working on a positive way. Is that something you're striving for as you write stuff? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's something that I try to do. I try to write music that people can uh, feel happy <laughs> when they listen to it. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like a lot of pop music now is... Um, like it's about uh, breakups or f having like anxiety and that's like all very important it's like especially this last year I've definitely written a few of those right um, but yeah a lot of my songs I try and uh, stay positive and optimistic because I think that everybody needs a little bit of light when they're listening to music because music is fun and that's that's what you should hear when you listen to it do you have to push to write those songs sometimes or are you naturally an upbeat person <laughs> i think i'm a pretty optimistic person um i don't think those songs were necessarily um more yeah more difficult to write i think those songs although i didn't write them like a long time ago but um over the past year like i've been saying i've been developing more of a, a different style so mm -hmm. Those songs, I feel like, were my optimistic kind of genre, <laughs> and now I'm being more diverse and um, touching on different types of subjects. But something I like about the songs that I'm releasing and that I have released is that they're positive, but they do come from, or at least Home, for example, comes from a more serious issue, but it's a hopeful um, standpoint. Because it just, I mean, from, 
I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, do you have to sort of, you know, remind yourself like, well, this is what I really like about this. Is this, uh, you know what I mean? Like that, uh, if it is going into that space or if it's something that you're just naturally there. Um, and how has that changed over the past year? Like you said, you you wrote some, you know, some of the depressing breakup, <laughs> everything's awful songs. Yeah. And that's not only because of um, the pandemic and everything that's going on. It's also because I guess I'm a teenager. And sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Fair. yeah, there's a lot of emotions going on. So um, my songs really do come from my heart and really what I'm feeling at that moment. So there are the optimistic songs, which I, I feel like I am most of the time. And then mm -hmm. there are the songs where maybe on an occasion I'm feeling down. And I really like writing <laughs> songs for my different emotions because it also tells me a lot about myself. I feel like I discover a lot of myself when I'm writing songs. And um, if I'm like, I, something I do is I guess when I'm just walking around or something, especially outside, I'll just start singing like one of my songs um, unconsciously again. Mm -hmm. And depending on what that song is, I'm like, oh, that's what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> like they're kind of a puzzle piece. And I feel like all my songs are like a puzzle piece to me or something. Have you found ever that your songs end up sort of, you, know, you said that they come back to you as you're, you're walking and stuff or you're out <laughs> doing things. Do your songs ever have end up with you telling your future self something that you maybe didn't realize at the time? Yeah, no, definitely. I've, I've kind of categorized my music in a few, um, I guess, a few topics. I'd say there's songs about being optimistic, which obviously optimists would fall under. Um, then there are songs about like confidence and trying to, and like girl power, <laughs> like trying to build mm -hmm. myself up. And then there are songs about love um, for family or uh, crushes, I guess, at this point, or friends <laughs> and stuff like that. So yeah definitely there's um they for, especially in the confidence section there's a lot of um messages that i try and send to um my listeners and also to myself through writing them for sure that's got to be kind of mind-blowing when you're there going, <laughs> oh that's what i meant that's what yeah. i was going for you know, yeah and sorry no go, go ahead. ahead no please go ahead <laughs> Um, and I think like a lot of um, artists say that where songwriting can be like a form of therapy because you really end up discovering yourself. Yeah. Cer certainly cheaper. You, know, <laughs> you, you look at some people, um, I'm thinking like Jennifer Lopez, uh, Jennifer Hudson, uh, Jeremy Renner, people who have both done acting and music. Is that something you're looking to kind of keep on going or are you much more kind of focusing in on the music and that's really your true love and your true passion. And you've sort of maybe discovered that through acting. Well, I definitely still enjoy performing um, in musical theater. And um, also I've been looking to be in a movie at some point, because I think that would be, that's something I want to check off my bucket list. Mm -hmm. and, um, but yeah, right now, I think my focus is um, songwriting and kind of getting my music out there because I've only released two songs so far and I have um, 70 that I've written and 25 that I really like. <laughs> um, and that list just keeps on growing. So that's definitely something I'm very interested in and very prolific in and something that I enjoy. Let's go back. So 70 songs? Yeah. <laughs> Over the past, how long? How long does it take to amass that big a body of work? Um. I don't know. I guess it. I just have like a growing list. I guess that's probably um, the past. It must have been since I like got out of School of Rock. So maybe like three or four years. Some of them, they're not all complete, I have to say. Okay. Some of them are like a verse and a chorus. But um, the 25. But there's an idea there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them are pretty full. Um, but uh, the 25 songs that I mentioned, those are more or less complete. 